Okay, we're going to take a look at the game Napoleon at Eilau, and this was published by 3W Magazine back in 1977, appearing in Strategy and Tactics Magazine number 138. Now, the game was designed by Ken Broadhurst and Colin Wheeler, and it's a very simple introductory game uh, of Napoleon at Eilau. It virtually uses the old Napoleon at War system, kind of pioneered by SPI. Uh, you may remember the old quad game. They were introductory games and, um, well, were in fact based on Napoleon at Waterloo, that very simple game that um, SPI used to distribute uh, as an introductory game. Now, for rules, we're literally talking three pages of rules. You can't get any simpler than that. So this is uh, an introductory game by all means. But I am amazed how in three pages of rules they were actually able to expand some of the Napoleon at War concepts by uh, having cavalry charges, combined arms, and even some leadership and reorganization. So it's a simple game but um, you know for what you get it's uh, not bad at all. Now for those of you who are not familiar with the battle uh, this uh, event took place in eastern Poland in 1807 and uh, here we have Napoleon's army stretched out before the town of Eilau. Eilau is here and the Russian forces here under Benningston and it was a terrible winter battle. The uh, battle was actually fought in a raging snowstorm. Uh, there was two sections to the battle. There was an engagement outside the town of Eilau the evening before where the French pushed into Eilau and the Russians fell back. But the main battle, uh, and that's what this game shows, took place when both armies formed up outside the town and then they went at it. Now the Prussians, who are on the side of the uh, Russians, will be coming in here and a corps of uh, French troops under Ney also pursuing the Prussians also come in this vicinity. So that's the kind of the strategic situation. Now, like I said, this is a simple game, so um, I'm going to do a replay of it here. I don't know if I'll film it all, but uh, let's take a look at some of the counters first. Okay, here's a closer look at the counters. Now, there isn't a lot of information on these things. Um, like I said, it's a very simple game. You've got virtually just your two numbers. You've got the combat value over here on the left, 5, and the movement factor, 6. The color on the counter indicates the core or division the unit belongs to. The small number there is actually the setup hex. Every hex has a small number on it to help uh, facilitate uh, setting up the game. Um, you've got Napoleon over there, just here, and of course the, uh, the little old guard here, just south of the town. Now the Russians composition is similar. You've just got your combat number, your moving factor, and the color. Uh, indicating what division it belongs to for the um, the Russians. Now the uh, game has you know, kind of a wintry look. They've made it uh, look white. Um, not a very pretty map. I've seen much better looking Eilau maps, but it is functional. Of course you got ridges. And they're going to affect line of sight. The artillery, by the way, fires a six uh, hexes in this game, so that's quite far. It's a radical different uh, difference than the early Napoleon at War system. Um, there's a reorganization phase, so as the units are uh, destroyed on the map, there's a chance that they can come back into the game. So that's kind of new. They can appear in a town in the rear of your uh, main battle, as long as they're not near any enemy units. Um, you've got reinforcement chart, of course. Men will be coming in, as they did historically. A very simple combat results table and of course your standard turn effects chart. So um, I'm going to do push a few counters here um, and uh, shoot a little bit of video as I play the game um, just to give you an overview of what the game is all about. Like I said, this is an introductory game all the way. This is not your definitive study on the Battle of Eilau. So let's see how it goes. Okay, these are the dispositions after the Russians have moved. All I did was just correct some little anomalies along the line. So the Russians made no aggressive moves and just stabilized their line. 
So the uh, now the French move. Okay, nothing fancy for the French. They just corrected some little anomalies in their right flank here and stabilized their line all the way down. Now they're getting a core coming on the board here and uh, checking the rules I noticed that because I moved the Russian unit within three hexes of uh, Davout's entry arrival his arrival will be uh, modified. He can come in anywhere within 15 hexes of that square unless the Russians move off which I may do. So we're going to do the 9 o'clock turn of the Battle of Eilau. Okay, this is after the Russians have moved for the 0900 turn. Now they have pulled back from the edge of the board, which will allow Davu to come on unopposed. Now their main line didn't move at all, so that was the only thing the Russians did, was pull back their left. Now the French will move for the 0900 turn. Okay, this is the French turn for 0900. Davout's corps pushed onto the board here, and we have a, an insignificant little wee one-to-one -one battle there. And all along the line, the French um, line approached the Russians. Now, I had the guard move up into Eilau itself, staying on roads, so that they can take advantage of that half movement point if they ever have to move. But otherwise, the line is fairly stable. So we'll do this one-to-one -one attack down here. Not very important. One to one with a one. And that results in a defender retreat. So we'll have the Russians go there. The French have an optional advance, but um, I think they'll stay where they are. So that's the end of the 0900 turn. Davu is pushed onto the board, and the Russian left is falling back a bit. Okay, for the 10 o'clock turn, the Russians decided to trade space for time again, so they've fallen back and uh, just stabilize their line a bit more. They're making a stand though now and they've brought up some troops to the center. So the French are close enough now that they could launch a major attack if they uh, wish to do so. Let's see what the uh, French do for the 10 o'clock turn. Okay, we've got uh, battles all down the line now. Um, this corps uh, under Davout engaged, and we've got Murat during a cavalry charge there, and we've got Ajaro going in, and Sult's corps going in. So we'll look at each of these individual attacks and see how they go. Okay, we've got an attack going in here, and this one qualifies as a combined arms attack because we're using cavalry, infantry, and artillery in the attack. And the odds are 8 plus 4. 12 to 6 is 2 to 1, but because we've got a uh, combined arms attack, it becomes 3 to 1. So we roll the die, see, yeah, 3 to 1 with a 6. 3 to 1 with a 6 is a an attacker retreat, so that attack was repulsed. And um, they have displacement in this game, but in, in this particular case, we don't have to displace anybody. So Florian is thrown back, as is Grouchy and this artillery can take a voluntary retreat. The Russian held held them off there. Now we have another attack here at one-to-one, -one, straight cavalry versus infantry. Let's see how that goes. One-to-one, -one, and they've got a four. That's also a repulse. Now in this case, we're going to have to displace. So we'll displace this five. Actually, no, we'll displace this artillery. So the Russians are doing well on this front. Let's go down the line here and take a look at these attacks. Okay, now this is another series of low odds attacks. Um, not too good. Hmm. I didn't actually see this. Okay, we've got Desjardins attacking this Russian 5, and uh, that's a 1 to 1. Uh, I should check the crests. Yeah, it's just straight 1 to 1. 1 to 1 with a 5. That's another AR. French are getting repulsed all the way down the front here. Okay, and we've got Desjardins infantry here along this artillery support. 8 to 5 is another 1 to 1. Here we go, 1 to 1. With a 1 this time, that's finally a DR. So the Russian division will be pushed back there. And, uh, wow, that would be risky entering there. No, the French will choose not to advance. So, 
we've got a 4 to 6, so 1 to 2. That's not very good. Soak off attack. 1 to 2. And we have a 1, though. And that actually works. That soak off attack pushes the Russians back. And, um, hmm. Again, I don't think I'll occupy there. Okay, we've got a huge division attacking this cavalry. That's another 1 to 1. Both die. 4. That's an AR. So these attacks are not doing very well. And we've got... Whoops, did I do that one right? Um, I lost track of where I was attacking here. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, he's repulsed. Okay. Um, this 5 will attack that 5, 1 to 1. That's a 6, that's an AR again. The French are not doing very well here. And now we're going to have this 8 attack this 4. That's a 2 to 1. 2 to 1 with a 6. Another AR. This is amazing. French are not doing very well. These counters are rather rounded, so it's hard to pick them up. Okay, we've got... St. Hilaire and, uh, no, we'll just have Legrand go against this Russian division there. That's another one-to-one. -one. Another six. This is amazing. Makes me wonder about this die. Okay, uh, the four will attack this uh, four. Another one-to-one. -one. Five. A-R. Unbelievable. Huge repulse all the way down the line. Russians are doing very well. All right. Well, we've got a combined arms attack here. This this must go through these odds. So we've got uh, cavalry, artillery, infantry. So we've got uh, seven, nine, fourteen to three is a four to one. That becomes a five to one. The French should be okay here. Five to one with a three, and that is a dr. So the Russians will be pushed back. I think in this case the French will advance to there. And our last attack over here on the left flank, 5 and 3, 8, 8 to 3, is another 2 to 1 attack. 2 to 1 with a 6. AR. Wow. The French are not doing very well. So uh, that's the French attacks for 10 o'clock. They got repulsed almost entirely down the line. So let's do the 11 o'clock turn and see what the Russians can do. Okay, for the 11 o'clock turn, the Russians are going to try to take advantage of that uh, string of bad luck for the French. And they're going to do some counterattacks all the way down the line, too. Uh, we'll see how those goes. Some good odds attacks here. So we'll zoom in and follow these Russian attacks. Okay, over here we have a small one-to-one -one attack. And we've got a soak-off attack against Moran's division here. But we've got a good combined arms attack. Uh, here against this division of Morand. So let's do those battles first and see what we get. So we have a one to one here against Moderates. One to one with a four is an AR. Russians are pushed back. I think they'll go there. Okay. We have the Sokov attack, which is three to three, one to one. And we roll a two, which is Defender Retreat. So the Sokov actually works. Moran is pushed back. Now we've got this combined arms. We've got cavalry and infantry here and this artillery unit. So we've got 13, 15, 17 to 5 is 3 to 1 because of 4 to 1. And it's at the high odds attacks you can get kills in this game. 4 to 1 with a 1. And there's our first defender eliminated portion of Moran's division. That's quite important. And the Russians will occupy. So they've made a nice little breakthrough there. Okay, now here we've got a Sokov attack. This Russian artillery will bombard Desjardins division. While these three units, and the, oh, pardon me, no, just these uh, two units will attack Desjardins at uh, 10 to 4, 2 to 1. So let's do this little Sokov here, 2 to 5, which is 1 to 3. Let's see what happens. 1 to 3 with 4. Uh, gives you an AR, which the uh, artillery can ignore. 
um, or just do a voluntary AR um, not to kill backup just to make sure and here we have 10 to 4 2 to 1 on Desjardins division 2 to 1 that results in a 4 and that's a DR so they've pushed back Desjardins division so that will have to displace and the Russian division will go in so now we've got Unfortunately, this five to five, one to one, and then this seven to four, one to one. But um, we better do this one first. Seven to four, one to one, one to one, and that's a two, which is a dr. So the Russians uh, have just destroyed another unit because you can't retreat into a zone of control. So another French unit is gone. Russians are doing very well and the Russians will occupy in that case too going in there now they have the Sokov attack one to one which could turn out to be a victory anyway and they roll four which is the old AR so the Sokov attack doesn't work but that's okay uh, where were we? Hey, one thing it's hard to find where you were when you're doing battles all down the line here oh yeah right here Okay back he goes. Alright, um, hmm, I've got a commander here all by himself. Um, I'm not sure what the rules are for that commander all alone in a square. I think um, you just ignore him for combat. So we'll do a one-to-one -one here on huge division. One-to-one, four, and that's an AR two. So back this unit goes. Russians are still doing alright. Okay, and we'll do a four to four here, another one to one. A lot of low odds attacks. And that's an AR. Oh, pardon me. Uh, I'm gonna have to redo that attack. I've got all these guns. So that's really uh, seven, 10, 13. That's a three to one. And I've just rolled a six, which is an AR. Very bad luck for the Russians. And they're repulsed. Some more attacks up the line here. Okay, some more attacks up the line here. We have a four to two, just two to one. On the die. And we've got a three, which is a DR. So Hilaire goes back. This Russian unit will occupy. And now we've got a, um, let's see, this infantry and that artillery. That's a six to three, a two to one on Laval. One, with a one, that's a DR. And that unit's going to be destroyed too, because he's surrounded. So the Russians are doing very well here, and in this unit goes. And we've got an 8 to 4, 2 to 1 on Laval there. 2 to 1, with a 3. That's a DR. And the Russians are cooking with gas here. They're repulsing the French all the way down the line. Let's take a look at the left flank. Okay, in this one we've got 10, 14, 3 is a 4 to 1. Roll a die with a 4. And you've got a DR. Again, the Russians are just doing very well here. And they advance. We have a 3 to 3, uh, 1 to 1 attack there. And they roll a 5, which is an AR. They retreat. And we've got a 3 to 1 attack there. And that ends the attack down the line. 3 to 1 with a 2. And that's a DR and the Russians will occupy. Let's take a look at the situation. Okay, well the Russians did very well that turn for the 11 o'clock. They've um, counterattacked here, and they're stabilizing their front. They've actually destroyed several French units. Three units were completely destroyed. So the Russians are off to a good start. Um, now I'm not, I'm gonna wrap the video here. I'm not gonna uh, photograph the whole game. But that gives you an idea of what this little simple game is all about. It's virtually the Napoleon at War system, um, Napoleon at Waterloo system. Very simple, uh, the quad-like rules, rigid zones of control, advance and retreat, etc. So, uh, good little game, uh, introductory, be a good introductory game to get new people into the hobby. Again, it's quite old and um, I love being one of my favorite battles. Uh, I think it's kind of cute. It's not your definitive game on the Battle of Ilau by by no means, but uh, I think you might have fun with it. So that's it for Ilau. Thank you for watching.